Hello everyone, this is Razi. So previously I was uh, doing the revision of my melting effect, trying to get more kind of realism. So in the meantime, I was uh, looking for references from other software or in Blender. And I found that Ducky 3D two years ago made a tutorial talking about a melting text effect. However, he was doing that non-procedurally. So I think this effect can be replicated in modifier and uh, definitely in geometry nodes as well. So let's do in kind of procedural more graph with that instead of a non-procedural one with proportional editing. So let's start. As always, I'm going to use the preset so you can download them for free from the link in the description. So let's start with a simple basic example that we use in IcoSphere. The reason I use IcoSphere instead of UV Sphere is the points are distributed more evenly. And let's take a set position. Uh, usually I'm using a noise 3D instead of noise texture. But in this case, let's use noise texture because we're going to remap it anyway. So let's combine X, Y, Z because I only want to affect the Z axis. So this is how it looks like right now. And uh, there are several things I'm going to do. One is I want to I want you to know that uh, normally this factor is aimed to produce a value between zero and one. But uh, depending on the settings you have, the minimum value is not zero. The maximum value may not be one. So it may the average amount may be close to 0 0.5 or something like that. The distribution of the noise is variable. So we always need to remap or actually normalize that. So let's take the factor into the value and output a new one. So that's everything. You make sure the minimum must be zero, maximum must be one. Okay. And you definitely can also remap it as we will see later. But uh, in the meantime, I only want to affect the lower part of this entire whole thing. So I need to generate a mask. So generating a mask, you can either use the selection or you can use a multiply mask. It will be better if you use multiply mask in self selection so that you can have a gradation of the effects. And to generate a mask, there are many different ways. Basically, it's a concept of a fall. There are so many different fall presets I made. In this particular case, you either use proximity or directional fall. Where's my directional fall? Or you can use a bounding box fall. So you take the Ico Sophia and use the bounding box fall, and you can see it's affecting on the X. So let's just switch to two so that it'll be affect on Z. So you can see the bottom part is not being affected. The top part is being affected. I'm going to change the such kind of relationship. You can use whatever method you'd like, but I am going to use this color ramp. And so now the relationship is being reversed and I need to change the field. And I can change the area being affected using this color ramp. Okay, so this is kind of result, and there are many parameters that you can play around. For example, the frequency, which is called scale, or the details, or other things. Okay, and once you have done all this kind of thing, we're going to make it uh, a little bit smoother. So let's take a subdivision surface, make it like a two, so that it looks kind of gooey. So now we have finished the basic setup, uh, knowing that this setup is completely procedural. In addition to just the, all this kind of procedural setting, we can also change the geometry that we're affecting. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another object and add a new node tree. Let's, start, let's uh, call that as a text. So that's a text. Okay. And I'm going to take a string to curve node. And let's type a geo node uh, at AE. Okay. Let's take that to center, middle, and I'm going to take a field curve node so it becomes a mesh. I'm also going to take a transform node so that I can actually see that. Okay. Let's take a solidify modifier and you realize it's not really working. The reason is that this string to curve node is outputting instances. So instances uh, is not providing the, is not accessible for its vertices location. So you have to realize it all the time. You can realize whatever stage, but it does not really matter. Once you realize that, then solidify modifier start to work. 
and we can also add a remesh modifier otherwise there's uh, not enough vertices in our subdivision for our future work so you have to use the remesh modifier actually the solidify modifier and the remesh modifier are the reason that i have i need to have a second node tree otherwise we can do that within a single node tree and a single object of course so now we have finished everything okay once we finish the preparation, we just switch the icosphere into the object of our text. So let's select this text object. Uh, just to take a little bit of precaution when you're switching the object, because you, maybe you, instead of adding a subdivision here, you add another subdivision surface, and you know that our geometry text object is already very dense due to the remesh. So it might have freeze your computer and crush it depending on how you use that. Okay, so finally we get this kind of result. Everything is procedural, just to switch an object and do whatever things you want. Everything is parametric, so you can actually, for example, let's decrease the value, maybe. So let's hide this original text object into the height. And uh, just try to play around with these kind of values. It's a little bit kind of slow because we're adding too much subdivision. But uh, yeah, something like that. It's also possible that you use other whatever stuff, but this is probably kind of idea, I would say. Uh, I can also add another bounding box for, I'm thinking. Because I want to make this kind of mask more spherical, so instead of, uh, so in this uh, second bounding box, instead of using the Z, I'm going to use the Y and let's take another mass multiply and uh, another color ramp as well and let's take the color into the mass so here I'm going to remap the white to be in the middle so the black can still be at uh, 0 and another at 1 and make it black so immediately you can actually see this effect. If I do not have this color ramp, then it's just uh, whatever. Okay. And you can try to play around all these kind of values. You can also map range this. So that's maybe 0 0.4 or something like that. So you drag it down, but it's not something like that. And uh, this is completely procedural. So play around with all these kind of value and the settings. And uh, that's it. Okay. At the last, I'm going to do a little bit of more graph things. So basically using the direct directional fold uh, so that uh, if I screw the empties, this drilling effect is occurring to my text object. But uh, before I really do that, I would like to call back my text object and in bump up this voxel size a little bit. Otherwise, my computer is very slow in this case. Okay, so you can tr turn that uh, number up when you are rendering but in the meantime this is the result okay let's create a, an empty so this is an empty object let's select our empty object and by default it's effective on the axis i think it will just be fine if we plug this fork into no 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 uh, we need to plug this into the normal lights and let's turn this maxima as 0 points, negative 2 or negative 1, whichever you want. So now we can actually see the disgradation of melting occurring. So originally there is no effect and then finally it becomes like this. And you can scale up this empty and also change that to arrows. So that's, this is the part with maximum effect and that part is the minimum effect. So the larger it will be, more smooth the animation will be. Okay. So just uh, enlarge that and try to scroll it and uh, you get this kind of result. And that's basically it. Not many nodes if you're using the presets. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Probably see you next time. Bye-bye.